you had mentioned exosomes. You had mentioned yes. fossils and you mentioned exosomes and I'm remembering. <laughs> so talk to us, would you please? Yeah, <clears throat> I went back, <clears throat> excuse me. I told you back from the days of bacteria, three levels of vacation, releasing signals like hormones, uh, nerve contact, and a third was viruses. Yeah. And the significance about viruses, there's no substitute for a virus. In my human body, uh, if I change my diet, there are cells that were used in the old diet. Their enzymes worked on whatever I was eating. I changed diet. Uh, those enzymes are not what I need right now. I need different cells. So <clears throat> I, wanna, I want those to be eliminated. But efficiency, why maintain a bunch of cells you're not using? Mm -hmm. So I need to communicate as well. Not just bacteria, but humans have to communicate. So guess what we found? Exosome means exo out of some body, out of the body. When I say out of the body of what? Cells. Cells release little pieces of membrane with some content. So the membrane of the cell pinches off a piece, and that piece is called an exosome. <clears throat> there are varieties of them. The good ones from before were waste products in the cell that the cell wanted to get rid of like garbage, put it into a vesicle, send it out, let macrophages break, okay? So a lot of exosomes, all we knew about them originally was they were like trash cans throwing out stuff. Mm -hmm. Then they found that a lot number of these very small ones are actually carrying DNA, RNA, and, uh, and cytokines, which are hormones for the immune system. Uh, well, these aren't trash. These are memory sticks. Oh. <laughs> these are viruses. And they communicate to our own cells. Now, this number, because this is like, the DNA was assessed in the Human Genome Project. 3% of the day, 3% of the DNA are blueprints to make human body parts. They go, what's the rest? Well, they call it junk DNA because people are, are in, well, they blame cells for being inefficient. It's like, no, they didn't carry around DNA for a billion years. That doesn't do anything. All that DNA is doing something. And guess what they found? Five to eight percent of the dna codes for viruses exosomes and i go oh my god more genes to make viruses than we have genes to make human body oh my and i go so why god. because it's the highest form of communication i'll give you one little example first then i'll give you a pathological example sure <clears throat> when an egg is fertilized by a sperm and now becomes a the genetics of the embryo are not the same as the genetics of the mother. It's a different self. I go, why is it relevant? Because by all a placenta, which is coming from the, the, the cells of the fetus, the placental cells are not the same as the mother cells. They're foreign. They're foreign cells. I say, yeah, but the placental cells grow and like cancer into the uterus of the mother, which anchors the placenta uh, uterus. I go, oh my God, the cells are migrating into the mother system. The mother system, by all rights, should be making antibodies or killing cells. So there would be no reproduction. But the issue is, well, then how does the mother system distinguish that the feed, even though it's foreign, should not be eliminated? So you ready? The fetal cells, the placental cells make exosome viruses mm -hmm. that are released into the vicinity around the fetus and the womb. And I say, what do they do? They carry information. I say, what information do they carry? They carry information that redirects the immune system to go away, don't deal with this over here. It sends them off on another task. So say, oh, so the, the uh, fetus has mess with the mother's immune system so that it can be maintained. I go, yeah. And, and actually, they think birth might be when the immune system recovers, in a sense, and ejects <laughs> the womb as tissue. Uh, so it says, well, yeah. How can I protect the foreign cells that are migrating and into the mother's system as cancer cells do? How can, how can that happen? The answer is, 
Exosomes are viruses made by the placenta that redirect the function when they plug into the maternal immune cells to send away so they don't bother it. Okay, so that's a very wonderful use of exosomes, otherwise we wouldn't be here today. God, now, yeah. I'm going to tell you, the same mechanisms are used by cancer cells. So what do they do if the immune system starts to come cancer, the cancer releases the same exosomes that placental cells release, causing the immune system to leave the cancer alone. And I go, this has been the biggest problem of why, how come my immune system isn't eliminating my cancer tumors? And I'm going because your cancer tumor is telling the immune system not to do it. And it's through exosomes. And so we keep trying to engage the immune system. I'm going, I don't care how much you're trying to activate the immune system. If those exosomes are pressed, the immune system is being directed by new information in the memory stick exosome that plugs into those immune cells and not to fight the tumor. And, and all it of a overrides we have the, so much trouble. What's that? It overrides the other original, you could say, understanding of the immune system. It's being overridden by a new program deriving from the exosome communication. Which is this? Now you call them exosomes because that was a class of vesicles. I said the large, the large number of them are garbage cans. Yes, viruses. Popular within them, they're still called exosomes. But I say, give me a definition of a virus. As soon as you give it to me, I say, well, that's an exosome. <laughs> Those no, exosomes that have viral function. This is okay? very interesting. They're coordinating, it's coordinating a community, you got 50 trillion cells that communicate with each other. Interesting, they found that a pre-cancer cell, wherever it is, could be in your leg, I don't know, you know mm -hmm. sends out exosomes, which are viruses, but there's zip code where? To where the cancer is going to grow. So it'll send, let's say, exosomes to the liver. And I go, what are they going to do? They prepare the environment for the cancer cell when it shows up. It's not even there yet. Cancer cell is still someplace else. It sends the exosomes. It's called terraforming. Terraforming. What is it doing? It's creating an environment that will support a cancer cell when it gets there. The environment is already being created before the cancer cell even got to that site. And so what is it doing? It's changing the character and function of the cells in the vicinity to provide support cancer. It's like, holy crap. <laughs> There's a lot more intelligence to this than we've recognized. We just thought some cancer cell ends up someplace and it gets cancer. I go, no, it even precedes itself with viruses to prepare the site to support a cancer when it's there. And I'm going, so what are you going to do about it? I say, you can give all the muscle building stuff you want to the immune system. So the, atoms, uh, the immune system is not going to attack the cancer. And that's why there's always, how come the immune system is not killing the cancer? And the answer is redirected. So I said, well, what can I do about it? And this is the whole thing, because we've been trying to kill the cancer cells. I go, the cancer cells are responding to a consciousness, <laughs> meaning you're not living in harmony. You're, you know, undermining your health with a cancer. Uh, give two examples of the same cancer in two people. At the same time, same diagnosis. The cancer doctor says, uh, oncologist, <laughs> says, patient, uh, your cancer is out of control. You look like you got about 90 days left, you know, of life. You got 90 days, so go home, take care of your issues because you have 90 days left. One person, believing the doctor, because now biology of belief is involved, has now a clock. 90 days from, I'm out of here, okay? And Dr. I go, so what? And I say, well, they're gonna die in about 90 days. And I say, what about another one? Same diagnosis, the same thing. I said, this one goes and goes, oh man, my life is not in harmony. Screw it, if I only got 90 days left, I'm gonna go out and enjoy, I'm gonna let go of the job, let go of the stress, find fun and happiness for 90 days. And guess what? The first one said, I got cancer because the cells were stupid and the doctor is gonna to try to kill the stupid cells. The second one got cancer and goes, my life's not in harmony. 
But if I only have a little bit left, I want to enjoy it. So what do they do? They let go of the stress. Yep. Then what happens? 90 days comes, then a year comes, then five years come. They haven't died. The other one, 90 days. I say, what's the difference? One of them owned responsibility yep. for the cancer. The other one denied responsibility for the cancer. Said, cells are stupid. I have nothing to do with it. I go, that's the one that's going to die because he owns no responsibility for the fact that that cancer is not an accident. That's a manifestation of a, har a system out of harmony. And that is the consequence. And he also accepted the authority of the doctor telling him, and he as victim bought into a belief system that programmed his brain, his nervous system to die on a certain date. Yeah, That's but his brain, that, you, you got it. You got it, Mitch, but let's just add one more thing. His brain was already manipulated in the first seven years of life to accept the fact that when he's sick, he does what his mommy and his daddy did. When the they're doctor. sick, where do we go? Doctor. And I say, so in the developmental programming period, when you learn that every time you're sick, it's not your job, it's go to the doctor's job, and I say, why is it relevant? Because we buy that the doctor is a professional and knows stuff. And who am I? I don't know anything. So I learned in the first seven years, when it comes to my health, I trust the, the voice of the doctor because that's the one as a professional and not. So when the doctor says you have 90 days left, to that individual who bought that belief, now 90 days is a clock that's counting backwards and will match that expression because they gave power of truth exactly. to the doctor and denied power of truth to themselves. Who am I? I've written, I don't know. I've written several articles about this going back literally decades, Bruce. And some of it came out of just my own thinking. And some of it came out of my experience of what were called Tavistock groups that I was doing at Yale when I was 16 years old and then later on uh, in graduate school. And it's all about a study of authority and the way we hold authority in our own minds and hearts. And that dictates who we are or who we are to become. And if we can own the authority ourselves without giving it out, and that doesn't mean not to ask specialists or experts their opinion, but that doesn't mean abandoning yourself at all. And we have equated the two. And if we can drop out of that, there's a lot more to it. I'm not gonna go into now. Yeah. But there's a whole very interesting psychology about looking at who we hold as authority and what does that mean? And when we deconstruct that, we become a lot more powerful ourselves and less prone to, uh, as we say again in Chinese, mishigas, other people's <laughs> uh, stuff. But you're from New York, you know. Yeah. But, but you I, know, I'd like to ask you, though, about this exosome, because this is just utterly fascinating. You can there, build the immune system at a moment when someone has cancer, but it's not getting the message because the message has been overridden by the exosome and inside the exosome, that specifically the virus, which are the communicators. So what would you say is then the remedy uh, to that? That's, you know, when I brought up vitamin C before as and described it as an antiviral, I was thinking that it would speak directly to the virus. And then you corrected me by saying it's speaking to the immune system to develop the antibodies to the virus. So in a case of thinking exosomely, if you will, what would you do to so-called deal with a cancer that is based on exosomes? <laughs> well, it's not based on exosomes. It's mediated by exosomes. It's based uh, on consciousness. Correct. So the idea is your consciousness will determine whether exosomes are going to support you or not support you. Oh. Because viruses are not you know, we say viruses all of a sudden bad, bad, bad. Viruses are oh, bad. Oh, I understand your biology. They're just they're just like a, a social media platform. They're, they're a communication <laughs> device. Right. What's bad or good is the consciousness behind 
the creation of that exosome. They didn't happen by accident or we're not involved. Oh, it was doing its own thing. It's not doing its own thing. It's responding to a visual it's image directed. of, do I feel healthy? Am I loved? Uh, uh, you know, is my life beautiful or is my life under stress? All of these thoughts Do are I believe what in certain... healthy longevity, for instance? Well, that's another topic, but that's telomeres. And <laughs> but <laughs> not limited to them. <laughs> tel telomeres are the fountain of youth built into every cell. Sure. We don't have to age. We don't have to age like this. This is program. This is how we age. How do you know? Because when you were a kid, you saw people got from young people to old people to dead people. <laughs> yeah. I see how that works. Where it's am I? Right. Oh, we memorized here. it. We memorized it. And then was our, says our cells memorized it. You know? No, oh, I man. get it. I get it. So yeah. what would you like to say to our audience, Bruce, about how to hold this issue? How can we use it? Because as we know, it's so interesting, you know, that going back to the Chinese ideogram of crisis also meaning opportunity. And there is this sense that not only is COVID happening, but our political system has absolutely fractured. Our economic system has fractured. And it's sort of like we're seeing behind the veil of Oz. You know, the emperor clearly has no clothes and it's not a pretty sight. And therefore, we are positioned seeing through more transparently than ever what is going on. And people are rising up in a very beautiful way in so many ways to seize the day, carpe diem, to really say, we're going to make this our world. And we don't want a world with global warming. And we don't want a world where it's a top down. We want grassroots up. We want a different democracy, a real democracy, not a corporatized one, on and on and on. So how do you see this as a fertile moment for all of humanity? And we have, in a sense, this whole issue of COVID to thank for it. Well, that's surely one of the one of the big, you know, symptoms of our failure uh, in the way we've created this civilization, and that we should own this. What you're seeing is a failure of human behavior to live in harmony with itself and with nature. And so you got two points. You can say, ah, screw it. It's only got a few years left. Let's enjoy it. It's going to go down anyway, which unfortunately a lot of people might be thinking. Yes. Versus I am creating this. Let's own it. First, I have to create my life to be in harmony before I can help the planet. Uh, in the hippie days, a million years ago, before you change the world, take care of your own backyard. Right. And, and this is the first step. I can't go out and march and save the world if I can't save myself. And so the reality is sort of like uh, in the airplane, when they talk about the mass coming down from above, they say, put yours on before you help somebody else. I go, precisely. Uh, this is the point. What you're seeing is a consequence of disharmony. That's what it is. And I say, when there's disharmony in the cellular community, it's called a disease. When it's a disharmony in the global world community, we call it a mass extinction at this time. Uh, and, and the reality is what? Am I a victim of this? No, I'm a participant. Well, then they all, what's a Bob Dylan, you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. And I go, we're all participating, but are you participating with, oh, 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 I'm a Always victim. me. Or are you going to take up the, the, the pride in yourself to say, wait, if I'm a creator, then I want to change my creation. And if I change my creation, I'll take care of myself. But then other people have an opportunity to grow off of that as well. And as you start to take care of yourself, you'll find other people making a community around you because they're also doing the same thing. Uh, and what we need to do is build that community up at the expense of removing them from the one that says, oh, I'm a victim of everything going wrong. It's like, no, move on to this camp. It's the only way out of this game. Do you have to suffer? I go, no, that's a choice. And you go, choice? I go, 
go back to the fundamental principle you are creating this with your consciousness if you don't like the creation you don't change the creation you change the consciousness and that's where the healing is going to come from it's not going to come from outside give me an injection of a covid vaccine which i would reject in a second because i also know never trust a company that will inject you with something and they don't have to tell you what's in it <laughs> that's the law and i get you that's know, you when you it. run <laughs> So the idea is this is the, it's a call to action for us to, as individuals. Mm -hmm. Wake up to who we are, how powerful we are in our creation, to recognize we've been programmed, but the programs are disempowering so that other people have the power. It's like the end of that. We gave them the power. They're, they're not helping us. They're helping themselves with and that look power. what they did with it, right? Look what they did with it. Yeah, they, they had the chance to help us, but they decided to help themselves. So, so uh, we're at this moment of helping ourselves. It's time you either do that, you either do that or buy the story. That's your choice. That's right. Those are your choices, exactly. Now, you and I, who are part of an evolutionary team, both innately and outwardly, are very committed to a certain planetary outcome, which is the yeah. healing of the species actually healing of all sentient life. That's what you keep talking about, being in harmony with nature. You know, I just got finished teaching a class in Taoism, on Lao Tzu really, on the beautiful poem, the Tao Te Ching. And it really reminded me of how out of alignment we are with nature, because that's all he's saying, is bring yourself back into alignment. As I have the pleasure of looking at you with the waterfalls right before it looks like you're it's wet wetting your head <laughs> but, uh, yeah right <laughs> but no it's so beautiful to behold you bruce uh, but you're in this gorgeous natural scene and this is what we're lacking and nature heals at the end of the day when we're in nature we're breathing deeper oxygen because of the chlorophyll and the green and it's filling our bodies and we feel rooted just like a tree does when we walk on the grass barefoot. And it's like we're connected. And I, for my money, I feel that this is really where we're going and what we need to embody more and more as time goes on. And nature has been teaching us all along. She's certainly not gonna stop now. No. And so uh, the conclusion is real simple, as you just brought up, Mitchell, and the choice is this. It's a choice. I may not stop the end of the world from happening because we're in that mass extinction, but I sure as hell am not going to suffer between now and the end. I'm going to enjoy everything I possibly can. Yes. Because the idea, that's a choice for me. If I leave that for the government to tell me what I can enjoy and what I can, it's like, I lost. I have no control over anything. That's right. And, and we have control. So is this time, are you going to, you want to fall in with all the other lemmings? Walk off the edge of the cliff because that's where they say we're going? Or do you want to just say, make up your mind, go the other way? That's a choice. And that's the beautiful part about this. This is all based on choice. I can't make you do anything. I can't tell you to do something. You have to figure out on your own what is your choice. But if you buy somebody else's choice, then by definition, guess what? You just gave up control of your life to somebody else. Absolutely. I'm not going to do that anymore. I did that for 40 plus years. Now the last 35 years is like, <laughs> I am creating what I want. That's right. Uh, 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 and the idea is, but I'm not creating at the expense of others. I'm creating at the harmony of others. I'm creating oh. by facilitating the community in which I live, a community of plants in my yard, or the community of people who I socialize with, I want harmony and I live in that harmony. If somebody's not in harmony, I don't associate with them. Goodbye. Right. I don't have anything against you. I just don't want to spend any time with you. <laughs> right. It's not personal. <laughs> no, I understand. And knowing the beauty around that you're surrounded by, by the way, out in beautiful, you know, California, uh it's it's very inspiring i'll put it that way and i understand you step out onto your deck and 
there you are in the middle of the womb of Mother Earth. It's so beautiful. There, I mean, when you look at it historically, the beauty of planet Earth is a gem in the universe. And we are privileged to live here until we disconnect. That's right. Then we're here, but we're not here. We're not here. And it's time to be here. Because why? There's no more beautiful place in the universe to be than where we are. <laughs> and so it's like a lot of people, well, wait till we get the rocket ship. Or we're... Like, Come on, man, you're here. This is where it's at. We're here. We're here for a reason. And there's a long, interesting genetic conversation. There's a perhaps even more interesting epigenetic conversation. That's the one. Okay, and uh, here we are manifesting. And even this dialogue helps to advance the whole way people can be on the planet with each other, even in the midst of so much seeming chaos. As they say, before the manifestation of order is the appearance of chaos. And clearly things look chaotic. But yeah, I would let say me, let me, it's an appearance. Before Underneath we close, it is something emerging. Before we close, I want to I want to bring something that's an important definition in here because people have linked chaos with random. What's going on is not random. Chaos means there's a plan, but there's so many details to that plan you can't comprehend the whole thing. That if you could understand all the details, you can predict exactly what's going to happen. Like the weather, the weather is not accident. The weather is chaos, meaning it looks like it's random, but hey, you know that story of the butterfly flaps its wings and changes the weather. It's like, butterfly yeah, that's part of it. You want to yeah. predict the weather accurately, then you damn well have to predict every butterfly in the world and every other insect and every other person and everything. And then you can make a perfectly accurate prediction of weather. It's not an accident, but it's chaos because I cannot take that many details and make sense out of it. Too so I see points. it, it looks like it's falling apart, and, but it's not, it's, it is and it isn't. It's falling apart, but it's building something new. It's sort of like a, a butterfly undergoes a metamorphosis from one yes. form, butterfly caterpillar, uh, into butterfly. And I go, where does this transformation take place? I say it takes place in the chrysalis, the pupa, uh, you know, where the, where the, the butterfly is, is forming in there. I say, what's in there? A caterpillar is breaking down and a butterfly is being built at the same time. I say, so what's the relevance? I say, if you just look at the bunch of cells, you go, it's a soup, it's a mess, it's chaotic. I go, yeah, it is chaotic, but it's not random. I say, why? Every cell has a destination. It's coming either from this caterpillar or going into that butterfly. And the significance is chaos is not random. We are in chaos. It's not random. I'll tell you what the conclusion is. The conclusion is we're going through a metamorphosis, which we may make mm -hmm. and evolve into a different civilization. Mm -hmm. or, hey, a lot of butterflies get in that, that chrysalis and never make it out alive. <laughs> Absolutely. It's I have true. no idea. But I'm going to enjoy as many seconds, minutes, and hours that I have left on this planet because it's a gift. And I'm not going to look it in the mouth and, and complain about it. I'm going to enjoy it. And if we start doing this and everybody enjoyed it, guess what? Harmony and love will be what is shaping our civilization. Right now, it's fear. And that is death. And if you keep on the fear, it's going to die. And I'm, because growth is the first compromise in fear. <laughs> it's like, nope, can't I, do both. You uh, know, and, you and I are great embracers of morphogenetic fields yes quantum fields and a lot of our consciousness is related to the reality of fields absolutely saying that in light of everything that you're so elegantly saying bruce which is that if more of us are in this state of appreciation of gratitude of joy of enjoyment of laughter, of playfulness, the way you and I do all the time when we're together. You know, the heart is lightened up, the frequencies are improved and increased and heightened, 
And just like in the hundredth monkey story, bing, everyone gets it. It's love as contagion. And it. it literally shifts the world. And we should not shortchange this scientifically based reality, although we know it intuitively, it's also borne out in quantum physics. Absolutely. Amen. A whole. Amen. <laughs> Bruce Lipton, I love you. I appreciate you. You are just a dear, dear man to me in my whole life. Very honest. Mitchell, Mitchell, my dear brother, we are connected whether I'm on one side of the country, you're on the other side, because our consciousness, our energy fields are entangled That's and they're right. enhancing the vitality of our existence. And, and we're being fed that energy to do what? A, show people that you could have this instead of that, if that's what you want. Uh, and, and as I said, you know, when I first said the, the knowledge was in my head, but I wasn't walking it. And so with all that knowledge that my life was still, it sucked. Yes. Uh, and then there was that time that said, when are you going to use this knowledge as a way of life <laughs> instead yeah. of a database? Right. Yeah. And that's when everything changed. And what I really want people to recognize is, Every one of us at this time has this opportunity. We want to share with you the information, but if you don't take it and make an active process, this information is useless. I, I had all this information, didn't change one thing in my life until I actually made it part of my life. And then my life radically transformed into a different life. So uh, Mitchell, I want to thank you for the years that you've been feeding the public a vision that is important for our evolution. Your work is profound because awareness, consciousness, knowledge is power. And we have been disempowered by knowledge, a lack of knowledge, in fact. Uh, and, and so uh, you're a clarion out there. You are bringing to the public, wait, there's other truths that you're not paying attention to, and you should, because these are the truths that create the character of our lives. And when you get it, you wake up every day going, oh my God, I'm still here. Thank God, I love this place. God, yes. I woke up again. Bruce Lipton, thank you so much for your kind words, dear brother, I love you. We'll have you back on. There are a few more other things to discuss. Uh, we've been going almost for two hours now and we wanna give everybody a little break. Yeah, right. time to go to the bathroom, go. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll come back soon together. Are you up for it? I, I would always be with you, my dear friend. Beautiful. Thanks again. Thank you. I so appreciate it. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Dr. Bruce Lipton, cellular biologist and, uh, you know, sage philosopher, all <laughs> wrapped up in one. <laughs> uh, this is Mitchell J. Rabin for A Better World. Make sure to contact us at mjr at abetterworld.net. Love to hear your thoughts and sentiments about our shows, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all next week.